So before we begin, this is just what I think they should do. This is what I think sh Sega should do. I got him told properly. Me. I'm not representing everyone, so just bear that in mind before watching. So, 2019 Sonic, we don't really know anything. We know we've got some Sonic Mania music. We've got Team Sonic Racing and the movie. Okay, maybe we do know a decent amount, but we don't know about the next game. Like, the next proper game, Team Sonic Racing was meant to come out last year. So, does that really count? I don't know. But, in this video, I want to discuss what Sega, or what I think Sega should do, to further the brand, to further Sonic the Hedgehog's brand, and what they should do, you know, for the next modern Sonic game, because those exist, because the last one that came out, Sonic Forces, Disappointment, of course, everyone knows this, everyone said it a billion, 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 billion times, but what should they do for the next Sonic game, for the next modern Sonic game, let's talk about it a little bit right here. So, I actually discussed this a whole bunch on Twitter, follow me, wink, 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 but I discussed this a whole bunch, and it got a lot of traction. And basically, people, there's a lot of people who think that the best course of action for the next Sonic game is to give Sega time. Lots and lots of time so that they can fully develop the game, so that they can polish absolutely everything, and that they can make the most grand, best Sonic game they've ever made. Now, I disagree. I totally disagree that we should be giving them time. And I think you all should know why, but if you don't, let me recap. So, 2013, Sonic Oswald releases, it comes out, made by Sonic Team. It's a fairly polished game that came out just two years after Sonic Generation. Sure, it wasn't everyone's cup of tea in terms of gameplay, aesthetics, all of that stuff, but it was a mechanically sound game. It was well made, it wasn't buggy, it had pretty decent in-depth mechanics, it just felt like a polished actual premium experience. So that's that, that was only two years. And then we go to Sonic Boom, everyone knows, big massive flop. Absolute, just killed Sega, pretty much. They put all of their money, all of their budget into that game. What happened? All because of the game, which I think is pretty ironic because it was meant to be for the TV series, that was the biggest thing. But the game ruined its reputation absolutely and completely, utterly, no. Nah. So then we went there. And then it was the big drought of Sonic. We barely had anything. We had some mobile games like Sonic Runners, but that was pretty much it. We were all starving for this new Sonic game. Then South by South, no, not even South by South, the Sonic Party. It was the Sonic, 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 I cannot talk. Sonic 25th Anniversary Party, 2016, July something, and we got the reveal of Mania and Forces. Two new Sonic games. That was pretty cool. It's pretty surprising. Well, not the classic, but the fact that we got two, pretty nice. So the year comes by, Sonic Mania releases. It's amazing. Sonic Mania is very, very good. It's made by Kristen Whitehead, and that's how they used their budget on that game. Because obviously, Sonic Boom had a lot of budget, then it went down, and they had to really conserve the budget. And I think Sonic Mania was the correct way to do it. It was a pixel based 2D game, so it doesn't require so much budget to use. I'm not saying it's not difficult to make, I'm sure it was really difficult to make, and it does take time, but the budget just simply isn't the same as a big 3D Sonic game, which is where Sonic Forces comes in. Sonic Forces comes in and the budget is, you see that it's just bad. You see the budget is just so low that it just, the game didn't really take use of it, and the game releases and bam, game sucks. Like the game is mediocre as hell to a lot of people, to most people, reviewers, a lot of the fan base, a lot of the fans themselves, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not talking on behalf of everyone, but looking by Metacritic, looking by everything, it's a commonly known thing that people think that is average. I'm not saying you think it's average, I'm saying that's what people think. But we had that, we had that, and how long did that take to make, guys? That's four. That took four years, guys. That's four years. And what is that? That is time. We gave Sonic Team time. We already did that. We got forces. Now, let's backtrack a bit to a bit of the other Sonic games and look at their development cycles and the subsequent releases of Sonic games. So, Sonic Adventure 1999. Okay, fair enough. Next game, Sonic Adventure 2 2001. It's only two years. Sonic Heroes was... Uh-oh. It was either 2003 or 4. 
please don't kill me. But that's still less than the gap between Lost World and Forces. Then we got Shadow the Hedgehog 2005. Then we got Sonic 06, Trainwreck. But then we got Sonic Unleashed 2008, Sonic Black Knight 2009, Sonic Colors 2010, Gens 2011, Lost World 2013, Generations was masterfully made, in my opinion. Sonic Unleashed is highly regarded by the fans now as one of the best Sonic games of all time. Sonic Adventure 2 is highly regarded, or was highly regarded by everyone to be such an amazing Sonic game. That's why Sonic Mania was the highest critically acclaimed game in 25 years, because it was Sonic Adventure 2 who, recently, who had that top spot. So, that didn't require four years. Why should the next game require four years? And here's the answer, and I feel like it's something everyone said, but I need to add a new spin on it, because I think people are getting it wrong. People, right, so I, I, I absolutely believe they should get new people. New people, new young people, reinvent Sonic. I think that's a good idea, but I do not think it is a good idea to ditch the current team. I think that would just be I don't want to say stupid, but just not wise. Not a wise decision, because it's not like they're all bad. I mean, I feel like the level designers are something you need to either train to a higher standard, or yeah, maybe get rid of the level designers, because no, Sonic Forces ain't cutting it. That was embarrassing, but that doesn't mean we get rid of the whole team. Takashi Izuka is someone people like to blame a lot for all of Sonic's mishaps. Don't agree with that. Sure, he might be a bit too leaning on trying to like please fans with the nostalgia stuff, but at the same time, I feel like he is one of the only people left who understands what Sonic is. Like he's doing it. He he's nostalgia pandering. He's doing it because he cares about the fans. He cares about Sonic clearly. He's the one who re like revitalized the franchise. He got Sonic Colors out there. Sonic Colors basically saved Sonic. Then, he was the one who wanted Sonic Mania to be a grand scale game. If it wasn't for that, it would just be a small, four original zone thing, whereas instead we got the whole massive 12 zones. Sure, it is reused zones, but they were still taken to a new spin. I don't like it that much, like the, the, the fact that they used the nostalgia. But, it's not as if they're direct rips, they're bigger in scale than they ever were before. And Sonic Mania ended up being highly, like, the most highly acclaimed game in 25 years. So, clearly, he's done something right. He's done something clearly Right, he saw the potential of Sonic Mania and he was like, make that into a big game, we get that money. And he got that money, he did. Because that game sold really well. We don't know how well it sold, but we go by Sega's words, I guess. It sold well. So, don't get rid of Izuka. If anything, I would say maybe put him back into like a different role so that he can still like overlook the game, but not have too much of an impact on it because I think the big issue is like this is well this is personal stuff right here so like personal bias but I don't like the nostalgia stuff so I'd rather them like do new stuff that's not necessarily what they need to stray away even though reviewers do not like the nostalgia stuff that much I feel like if you're using old stuff you you, you give it a brand new big spin then it can work well such as some of the concept art in Sonic Forces like the the uh like Stormy Green Hill Zone, it's a prison. I mean, that's a neat spin. I feel like that's different enough to qualify Green Hill being in again. Most stuff like that, I don't mind, but when it's direct rips, pass. Absolute pass, but I don't think that's the issue. The issue is that they just need new people, no matter if they're fans or they work in the industry. I do not care. They just need new people. Don't get rid of the old people entirely but give some new people a chance. And in fact, I would argue, and this is gonna be controversial, getting people who aren't that familiar with Sonic. So they know what Sonic is, you know he's fast, he's a platformer, but don't get people who are super, super knowledgeable so much that they've got biases on what Sonic should be, because Sonic is one of those franchises where there's so many different gameplay styles, so many different fans, that some fans prefer one thing, other fans prefer another thing. If we've got someone who doesn't really have that mindset, I feel like they could end up making something kind of revolutionary for Sonic because it would be entirely their own vision without basing it on their personal experiences. Now, that does sound controversial. Ooh, twit, why, why, why get inexperienced Sonic fans or inexperienced, not even Sonic fans, Sonic, inexperienced people in terms of Sonic. I just, I think that could work because it doesn't take someone who knows Sonic just to get it right. It takes a good designer. It takes 
good program is. It doesn't just take how much knowledge do you have of Sonic, it's applying that. You apply the knowledge. They could easily look back on games and apply that in a new way. They don't necessarily have to be Sonic fans. I'm not saying don't get Sonic fans. They would be useful in other areas, I think. Like, in terms of, like, story, I feel like Sonic fans would be very good for that. And characterization, things like that. And maybe, like, some level design? But if we're, if we are making the next, like, gameplay style, because I do not think it's the boost whatsoever. I think the boost is dead forever. I think it's going to be a new gameplay style. Then I don't necessarily think we should be going and trying to find fans. Just get anyone who are qualified for the job, basically. That's, that's what I think. And no time. Don't give them four years. That is absolutely ludicrous. I can't talk today. It's ludicrous. I think it's ludicrous that we should give them four years because we just did. That is why. Let's end up the video. Basically, they've had time before with Sonic Forces and they ended up being mediocre. Some of the best Sonic games of all time did not need this development cycle. Sonic Unleashed in particular had to create the Hedgehog engine and the entire game. And people love that game now. And it is a sound, it's a sound game. Like, it is polished, it's well made. So they do not need that time. I think that's unfair. I think, I don't care if this sounds like me being impatient, I'm really sorry, but they, they, they had the time to demonstrate and they just failed. They completely failed. So, another drought like that, I just do not think that's gonna help. But that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you agree with me? Should they get new people? Should they stick to the old? Should they fire the old people? I do not think so. And do they need a lot more time? Because I just... I don't know guys. I think that's a bit crazy and a bit unfair. I think it's unfair that they should get more time because they've had it before. But with all I said, thank you all for watching. Peace out my dudes. I, did, I said that really fast. Alright. Peace out.